fates, and that is the Evelyn ban taken away from Selfmade. Makes a lot of sense, as Syndra going to be the follow-up ban, and of course Lucian has to be banned. Uh, he suffered his first loss, I believe, in the hands of Bjergsen in our last game, and Senna going to be locked away here by LGD, so at least his wife gets in. Is, yeah, I mean, the wife coming in, very important. Fnatic with the B1 Orianna is very interesting. So Nemesis gonna be the one who's walking in blind. And that's gonna be fine. Now Senna and Graves both picked up. This is an angle that I know that Whippo has spoken about publicly mm -hmm. on a few occasions. In regards to, this is a very heavy commitment to physical damage. And obviously it opens up possibilities for certain tanks to come in, but looks like we're having a Volibear just being hovered, it's most likely just going top lane. Yeah, we haven't really seen too much of the old jungle electric bear as Nemesis for our friend LS's benefit is, of course, going to hover the Annie. <laughs> most likely not going to lock that in. But if you are looking for gold in the season, definitely do do that <laughs> when you are at home. Take the man's advice, drop bears on people. I uh, definitely love drop bears myself, but to go back to some seriousness, Leona going to be locked in here for Hillsong. Um, which is interesting because, of course, his Thresh is left available. He showed us exactly why so many teams have been banning it away from him in uh, the first round of groups. Now, Shie, wondering what he wants to take away here. Graves already locked in, not looking for any junglers. He could take away a pick into the Orianna. And uh, the Zoe is going to be the consideration. Zoe Graves has been something that we've seen get a lot of success. Yeah. Even if it doesn't necessarily make us super happy when it comes to uh, the draft phase, it does just mean a whole lot of mid-game damage. And well, it also means a whole lot of potential early game control, depending on what the jungler matchup is also going to be, how Zoe manages to RNG some of her drops yep. in the early phases. And now we're going <laughs> to move into the second ban phase here. And this one is where things get a little bit interesting because, in theory, LGD can just answer top pick on R4 and then counter pick bot lane on R5 and look to get a pretty big edge with Senna down there in bottom. Lilia is going to bite the dust. Um, interesting that we haven't really seen too much attention given over to Mark. I guess his Leona has been taken away, something that he's definitely been defaulting to a lot. But uh, otherwise, not too many bans away from him. We'll see whether that is the decision Fnatic are going to make. And it is, as uh, Sir Thomas or Timothy Kenshins, depending on where your mindset is, is going to be banned away for the first one in the second round for Fnatic. Second jungler could come in here to really make uh, Selfmade have to de dig deep into uh, the, uh, the champion pool. Or maybe take away something on the top side of the map if they're assuming the Bolly Bear might be making his first jaunt into the jungle. I actually really wonder what Self Made's gonna go for here because there's so much magic damage on the side of Fnatic right now, and Graves has already been taken away. So yeah. this is where things are really interesting because with Bolly Bear, Oriana, Leona all being there already, Merc Treads are already incentivized. So. Other magic resistance items, when, you, when you're thinking about them, champions like Karthus even begin to get removed. Kindred's banned away, so is Evelyn. Lilia also removed from the table. This is a pretty awkward angle, where even champions like Nidalee, who's going to be very supportive and things of that nature, begin to look a little bit questionable unless they're intending to try to hyper Reckless. Yeah, it could be a possibility here as the Nautilus is going to be a pretty standard one here for Mark towards the bottom side. We'll give him some of that uh, that engage potential and there's something that we've seen a lot paired alongside the center. So that's the bottom lane locked in. Let's see what the answer is going to be from Fnatic. Reckless still with so many champions left in that champion pool and up his sleeve. Uh, Twitch theoretically is available, but doesn't necessarily Twitch pair as well with the Leona. And Ash, of course, uh, being the more default choice as oh. LS next to me throws his pen on the table as Nara's being considered as Hecarim is once again going to be locked in after a lot of the junglers have been removed. We saw this happen uh, relatively recently. I believe Baroxa did this and uh, didn't necessarily work out as a last pick. Oh no, the R5 Renekton back to bite us once oh, again. No. I'm Longxing, casting. Uh, you are, and oh, this, no. is also, this is also Longxing, remember? You know, earlier today, he had a 0-4 Renekton experience where he was still able to win teamfights. That is... Somehow, in a coin flip, Genji won that game at the end, so... Because I, I 
Morales. I think Renekton's a late game champion. Uh, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, when it comes to Longsheng and what he's able to do with it, uh, that is definitely how I'm feeling. Um, and look, we'll see whether it is going to work out. I personally hate uh, Renekton Graves. I don't think it really uh, is the way that you want to play the top side. Does yeah. mean that Blippo can just build a whole lot of armor and probably be okay, especially yeah. considering the Volibear likes the matchup. This is where I'm wondering if Whippo's going to do the full tank Volibear here because he has the best setup for it. Bramblevast, Ninja Tab Eyes, they're super effective as yeah. only purchases here against the Renekton. Now, the other thing, though, is there's still so much magic damage on the side of Fnatic's team composition. With the Ash coming in as well, Merc Treads, QSSs, and later stages, they gain even more value, which becomes very scary. So, I am mostly interested to see what is going to happen here, because it feels like Fnatic, even though there's a Renekton on the enemy team, they're the ones that are likely on the timer here. Senna and Zoe, if they go the distance, Graves gonna have a very good time scaling up as well this game. Things get very scary. It's gonna all come down to the Hecarim and Orianna combo and what they're gonna be able to find in the later stages. I think a lot of it's gonna come down to Hawk Shots as well because if this map gets dark for Fnatic, then LGD theoretically have a great opportunity to throw around those bubbles and really get those picks when we get to mid to late game and Hawkshot is going to be absolutely pivotal in making sure that Fnatic can stick to their game plan Fnatic have looked good so far today. LGD a little bit shaky. Did manage to get a bit of a fight back against Gen G before ultimately falling down. Still very, very interested to see whether this one's going to work. And to go back to those tiebreakers, if you are not necessarily a fan of either of these teams and you're just a fan of watching as much League of Legends as possible, you're a fan of LGD. In this one, they need to win back-to-back -back games, and then I believe Fnatic needs to take the last one. Yes. And then we get that three-way tie where we are going to be playing a lot more video games towards the end of the day. And uh, we'll see whether LGD is going to be able to do it. I think as far as power level displayed today, it has looked like Fnatic has been far more well-oiled. But uh, LGD, they just sometimes win games, you know? Yeah. They're one of those teams. It, it looks like they are very capable of swinging up and down. The stakes are very high, obviously, in this game. This group has been so neck and neck, yeah. pretty much, between the top three. And this must personally be a bit of a, a, bit of a, a heart terror for you, LS. You know, you're quite close to a lot of the Fnatic players. And, uh, you know, there are some LCK players on the side of uh, LGD. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you like League of Legends, so we want the tiebreaker. So, like, I mean, where is your heart in this one, you know? Nemesis is one of my greatest friends in life, but we'll see what ends up happening. I did predict them to lose. <laughs> like that. But the way I view it, Atlas, is yeah. that I get the best of both. If he wins, then one of my friends wins. Yep. But if he loses, my pickums. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's Covering both of your bases. I just went all in. I, I did my predictions today based on my pickums. So I'm either going to win a lot or lose a lot. Uh, and we'll just have to see how it is going to go as this day uh, commences. So far, not too much early action, but you can see a bit of a grouping formed on this bottom side as LGD going for this late invade. We'll be able to get in there. No kills are going to eventuate, but Peanut is going to be able to comfortably steal away this red buff to start things off, as I believe some vert vertical jungling could ensue unless Peanut goes for a little bit more of the aggressive route. Bit of Ooh. Biffo here towards the bottom side, piercing darkness. Mark getting taken down very low, though, has to flash as the aftershock comes out. Double flashes from Fnatic. They desperately want this first blood, and they will take it. Now Crane is in trouble, does have to cleanse, still has flash, is going to use it. Last auto shot comes out, and there are some real happy bees on the side of Fnatic. And this is a very explosive opening for the bot lane of Fnatic once again in one of their games here as an enormous lead. Granted, over to the bot lane. And things are looking real good for them. It has to be very tilting as well for LGD, the manner in which this unfolds. Yeah. Maybe just slow and steady here as uh, Whippo is going to hold on to a few minions. I oh, the lane management. I think just Whippo is, is going to go for the full tank. Volibear, has the Conqueror instead of the Grass for the Undying. So we might indeed go for Bramble Vest, Ninja Ninja Tab Eyes, and then pivot Sunfire with Gunblade or something. 
Huh? He's actually fighting Longxing at the moment. Does get his Conqueror, but uh, Buipo is going to win out in the trade for now. Selfmade looking for some camps to take. Didn't actually head towards the top side to grab a red buff of his own and will now discover a Graves in the jungle. Level three to level three. Quick draw to get Peanut out of there. Selfmade will just take the wolf camp. Whippo down to 200. Longxing doing well with the Cull the Meek. He's looking for a cheater recall, you can tell. Just gonna craft this wave in. Yep. Back up. Yep. Get the reset. Gonna go home now. Currently a little bit in the lead, but you can see Long is gonna come back after picking up that minion wave. Selfmade gets himself a crab towards the bottom side, but that will be a trade between him and Peanut. As uh, often we've seen the way to get around a Hecarim team composition is to just make sure that there aren't too many camps for Hecarim to have. And uh, so far, Peanut's taken a red buff, and we'll see whether he can get more in this game with the extra priority that we w that he will have. Of course, Longxing able to push out his wave now. Whippo making his way back up towards the top side, and LGD definitely wanting to keep up the tempo here. Longxing teleporting immediately back to get a complete shove of this minion wave. Meets in the middle. Now it's looking this... like it's stacking up. I mean, this is top side. Beautiful coordination right now. They, they're threatening a freeze. That is going to be the pushback onto Mark. Remember, he doesn't have a flash. He's got an ignite, but uh, he's not going to be able to do anything. And that is two kills. Bottom side for Fnatic to start this one off. Yeah. And the reason this is so good is because they're, they're threatening a freeze. There's no teleport or something on the side of Kramer. Peanut on the opposite side of the map. So because Hecarim's pathing lines up with him being at Golems, they're able to basically say to Senna and Nautilus, hey, if you don't unlock this, you're going to lose the equivalency of several kills anyway. But if you walk up, Hecarim's here, you're going to die. And so LGD just forced to walk up to the wave. They end up getting killed. The kill went over to Selfmade as well, which is basically the best that you could hope for. Yeah. Oh, Selfmade is going to find Peanut once again. Oh. The bubble. Oh, it connects onto the Grom. Oh. That is not what you want. And he loses the smite fight. Now Nemesis is coming around. Only level five. No shockwaves to be had. As Shie, a lot of extra movement speed. Finds a paddle star. But otherwise, not too much more. But LGD in the end get absolutely nothing for spending some time in the enemy jungle. I think Selfmade feeling in pretty high spirits. He won the smite fight as well. On the Grom. He's up in EXP right now. Peanut really just struggling to do anything. And Graves in this situation, not really having the best of times. He knows that it's going to become increasingly more difficult to start ganking some of these lanes. And also, this is the time where the Graves is supposed to be strong in this matchup as well. Selfmade is only going to ramp up further and further as he gets closer to the Trinity Force and afterwards. There's Longxing doing pretty well here. If you guys remember back to planes, Longxing's Renekton's pretty damn good, guys even if it did lose today. Looking forward to seeing uh, how he's gonna go as another fight breaks out here towards the bottom side. Mark taking a lot of damage again as Hillisung, he wants to find and he will pick up that kill. Now Kramer just trying to trade back, but the damage has already been done. This bottom lane has exploded for LGD. Fnatic absolutely dominant. And it just, it really feels like Fnatic have found the mark of weakness on the side of LGD because the bot lane is falling apart, and if you remember, the way that Fnatic dominated against Gen. Oh, there's the shockwave. It lands onto Peanut. Oh no, Nemesis is going to finish off that kill while the rest of the team oh. is looking for Kramer. Peanut though is actually going to escape. She finds a bubble, but now there are four members that are looking for the Zoe. Peanut, you need to get out of there, mate. You're not going to be able to do anything with the help bar that low. And self-made should probably take the same advice. The horse is so low. She turns around with a swift auto attack. No kills just oh. yet. Portal Jump comes in and Reckless eventually grabs that kill, but he is going to bite the dust for it. And now Peanut continuing to bait Hillisung. Flashes forward the smoke screens there, one more auto. It's Kramer grabs the double kill and Long Sheep somehow turns up from the top lane. He walked all the way down. <laughs> Renekton, Renekton's long adventure yeah. ends up helping out a little bit. He's also going to be in mid lane. He's going to catch the wave, Zoe. Up in top lane now, gonna run there. There's a cannon wave, so it's gonna absorb a lot of time, but Whippo not able to be there in the end. And LGD, just like that, the gold lead is all but gone. Yeah, all of that early power that Fnatic had just rewritten in a moment yep. as we are going to have a look at the replay here. As it looked like Peanut was just utterly caught out, the shockwave was great to try and yeah. grab him. 
Chopwave was really good, and then Nemesis right here. The heal from Zoe wasn't anticipating it. He had the flash. He could have followed up with the flash auto onto Peanut. But I, I think he thought Peanut was gonna die, so he held on to his flash. It ended up coming back to bite him. Kramer on the right-hand side. Nemesis completely out of mana. Shie, the paddle star from another universe, comes back, collides with Reckless. And then, he'll listen, he gets his flash back up. Now, they don't know about Renekton coming, so maybe this was a little bit better in their eyes, but it doesn't matter. Yep. Senna is so big now. She's huge, and uh, Senna has been a pretty extraordinary pick so far at Worlds. We've uh, seen what Rule has been able to do with it today, but I think Jackie Love has probably set the standard for how amazing Senna can be. And let's see whether Kramer can do so as well. As he does have his man immune completed. Kramer has been performing very, very well for LGD. He cer certainly wasn't a standout. Definitely was good in the awesome dude meta, being able to play a lot of different yes. things towards the bottom side of the map, but he wasn't necessarily a star player when he was on the Afrika Freaks over here in the LCK. But uh, since moving to the LPL, he really has become a carry for LGD. So let's see whether he can demonstrate it here today, now set up to do just that. In theory, still a thousand gold lead for Fnatic. They are still in the lead. But LGD making plays like that certainly going to help them out as this game goes on. Well, as the game does currently stand, Hecarim is quite a big boy. Fnatic, they are still 1k gold ahead right now. Cloud Dragon being the first one of the game, not very high priority. No. For either. Hecarim will find the graves in the jungle. Self-made and peanut, gentlemen's agreement. They are just going to back away from one another for now. Top lane looks to be the destination for the horse as he's cantering up there at the minute. Longxing knows exactly what's going on, has Dominus available. No flash up, but will have a lot of health bar to get through here for Fnatic. Bramble Vest is completed, like you were talking about. The uh, tank volley bear, certainly a good option. Whippo is going to do exactly that. Boris be damned. <laughs> Buy his book. No, don't do that. Buy the Lost Shopkeeper's book is uh, in goes Shie, but immediately the Xenoblade comes out from Hillisung. That's a great dredge line to immediately eradicate the Rift of Reckless. Now Hillisung, he does have an orb circulating around him, but no teammates as Selfmade was taking down the Rift Herald. So Rift Herald in trade for Reckless's life. It's probably okay here for Fnatic, depending on what they do with it. Slice comes in, dice available, but used defensively. Shia is gonna go gold, he picked up his stopwatch. As, oh, a little bit mistimed there. As the Dawning Shadow will try and keep Shia alive, but he's lit on fire and taken down. That's gonna be the kill going over to Nemesis. Now Long Jing brought away from his turret and he'll be taken down as well. Fnatic fight back quickly. Yeah, and Fnatic are really keeping the pressure up right now. They have the Rift Herald, they're going to... <laughs> Selfmade dancing on his corpse. That's uh, is what's going on there. Beautiful. <laughs> Kramer and Mark, they are getting a lot of damage down here onto the bottom turret. But yeah, they're going to summon the Rift Herald here up in top lane. Let's see if they actually want to raise the entire turret. This gives Renekton the ability to comfortably farm. And it means that Whippo's now going to be pressured to do something. Okay, it's actually not going to get the entire turret. So this is still very good because it means that the laning phase will be extended so that Renekton's still forced to walk up inside of the lane against Whippo. Yep, see uh, whether it is going to be the bane of Longxing here, who still hasn't got towards his uh, Blade of the Rune King just yet. Now Sheen has been completed here for Whippo. He's got uh, definitely a uh, eclectic collection of items at this point in time. A little bit of a build bear. It is, uh, well, we're building a bear, that's absolutely true. Whippo taking it a little bit too literally, but that's okay. Certainly benefits from all of the stats of the items that are in his inventory, the 20% CDR being uh, mainly what you're after. As uh, the lead has extended for Fnatic. Yeah, and the other thing is the Seraph's Embrace already on Nemesis. I mean, he's very big in this game right now. He's up 15 CS. He's almost able to get that turret plate. We'll see if he ends up managing to get it before the turret plates do fall. Yep, still got a minute and a half on that one, so chances are he will be lucky on that front. Uh, having a look at the Hecker himself, mate, has gone for the Warrior Enchant very early here. Often we do see the rush towards the Trinity Force, not happening here in this game. 
Self-made wants power a lot earlier in this game by the looks of things, and you can understand, looking down the lineup of LGD, why he'd make that decision. Silasang once again going in. This is one versus two at the moment, but Reckless over the wall, flashing in after the arrow lands, and that may have been a waste of a summoner spell unless they can get this dive onto Mark. Autos onto the turret as there's the depth charge to lock down the Ash. Hillisung going down very low, but Eclipse oh. will keep him up. Now Kramer looking for the Piercing Darkness just for some health back as Selfmade is going to back away now. Peanut flashing. Collateral damage misses due to the flash. Now he's found Reckless is going down very, very quickly. Xie doesn't find the paddle stuff, and there's a lot of sparkles there. And he'll oh. pick up a double kill, utilizing them. This is the power of the Zoe in these scrappy fights and Selfmade. He gets one back, but now he's behind enemy lines. It's Owen self-made Wilson here who's looking to try and get himself out of trouble. GA, he picked up a flash. He's going to use that to shut down the horse. So unfortunately, not the happy ending that that movie does in fact have is going to occur in this game. But towards the top side of the map, Whippo will be able to answer with a turret gets the last plate there as well as we do have 10 seconds before those plates fall down. Yeah, and I mean, the, the action's just never starting. Now, Longsheng here, he's got a little bit of a hot date, gonna immediately shove back the wave. Collateral damage comes out, whips onto Hillisang, but Fnatic, they were going a little bit too hard in this. Now, the patience on a self-made to hold his ultimate. He goes back in onto Kramer. Kramer flash north rather than back into his teammate. Almost actually let Selfmade get away. Yeah. Rather than pulling him back in, also held his ultimate throughout all of that. Nemesis not able to be there or do anything during that time. He does extend his CS advantage. He's gonna move over here. He's gonna pick up the blue buff. And oh. the lane will, the game will continue to develop. It's a 2,000 gold lead. Mountain in one minute though. Super big dragon for both of these teams. Yeah. Crazy that the gold lead is 2,000 in favor of Fnatic, but the man with the most gold is in fact Xie in that mid lane after picking up all of those kills. Does have seven kill participation as there's the flash in from Hillisung. I believe that was a hex flash. You may as well just press that button whenever it's available, but isn't actually able to find the Zenith Blade afterwards. And it'll be the disengage, but you know, Hillisung can just go for that whenever he feels like. Solar Flare going to be up in a couple of seconds time. That will mean full power for the bottom lane of Fnatic despite Reckless not having any summoner spells. Piercing Darkness comes in, another Xenoblade is going to land, as that's going to be the cleanse, but the follow-up arrow is going to be good. And Whippo comes through and gets rid of the Senna ulti. It's going to follow up there as Mark, he's going to go down, double kill for the Volley Bear on the bottom lane of LGD. And they do not have an answer for the Fnatic aggression. No, they don't. And I mean, this is going to be Mountain Dragon going over to Fnatic. They're up three and a half thousand gold, roughly. This is a pretty good situation. Peanut. That onslaught of shadows comes in. The pushback is sheer over the wall. Peanut lasting for quite a long time, as that is a decent time for a sleep there. But Whippo, he'd done all he needed to do by taking down the jungler. And now this Mountain Drake should be available for Fnatic. That will equal out the dragons, but highest value definitely in the hands of the Europeans. And OK. Fnatic. Oh, Infernal as well. We got an exciting one. This is definitely a spicy soul. Oh, yeah. As Black Cleaver is being built towards by Graves, or is he trying to build Phage twice? Uh, uh, you know, I mean... <laughs> Boris does work in mysterious ways. He certainly does. I think that might be a Serrated Dirk and a Kindle Gem to be coming through there for Peanut. He just wanted the Pahage to have it there for the extra movement speed. Sometimes that's a thing that you want, especially uh, with Phase Rush. Now Whippo's going to turn back up towards the top side, and we're going to have a look at this one from Whippo's perspective as he grabs that double kill. Well, we see he just comes in here, gets on to everyone, uses the ultimate to just launch right on top of Nautilus. There's not a whole lot that LGD were able to do there. Now, Fnatic. Four and a half thousand gold lead. They did have two turrets, so the turrets that are still standing, once they do fall, that will help to reduce that a little bit. Selfmade now gonna pick up the second Rift Herald of the game. Almost has his Trinity Force completed, and also important to note, he didn't actually skip his yeah, right. item. Talking about that before, it was quite interesting, that decision. It seems to have worked out. And he's gonna finally get this. Nemesis now 
Looks like he's moving towards Zanya's as his second item. I'm curious where this game is actually going to head in about three minutes because that fight around the Infernal Dragon is going to likely decide everything. Yeah. If Fnatic gets it, they're probably going to be able to carry through to the game, but if LGD get it, it gives them so much stabilizing power and it buys so much time. True, Longshin going to be fighting Whippo here. Conqueror's going to proc as they're just fighting over the Krugs. Relatively even, but uh, in the end, I guess a slight advantage there for Longshin. 4,000 gold is going to be the lead. LGD, they do have a two-item comp. You know, they do want to fight, like you were saying, around this next Infernal. They made it a little bit difficult for themselves, or at least Fnatic have, in this early game. This Fnatic's comp is going to be devastating in the late-game teamfights. Feels like uh, teamfights will sort of work themselves with this uh, Hecker and Bear diving on in. Shockwaves being available as there's center plate time beautifully onto Shia. He's trying to get out. A lot of movement speed, but it's not going to be enough. Hillisung is eventually able to lock him down. Shockwave's going to come through. That picks up two kills. And Hillisung's not done. He's underneath an inner turret. Has a stopwatch to keep himself alive as there goes the turret from the fight. Bipo continuing forward. Longshing's going to go down and Kramer's like, what the heck am I supposed to do? Triple kill for Nemesis. And Fnatic are smashing this game. And then Fnatic, I mean, with this kind of a gold advantage, it is unfathomable to assume that they would lose that next dragon now. Their chance to win this game must be so close to 100% almost at this point. LGD blowing that fight right there, botching it, it sets them so much further back, and they, they already were behind yep. inside of this game. So we'll take a look at how this all transpires. Shie, just getting caught and collapsed on everyone grouping up. Solar Flare with the enchanted Crystal Arrow. Webo there as well. Kramer, he can't do anything on Senna. In this situation, Renekton comes in, not able to really add anything of value. And this is the mid game of this Fnatic team composition. It has so much cohesiveness in just grouping and stomping onto opponents' team compositions. And LDG, they didn't really go the distance yet. Nope. They haven't been able to get too much work done whatsoever. And this is like, this is the time where LGD's comp's supposed to work as well. It's just Fnatic have been able to so ingeniously play out this early game. Peanut does get the smite on the big Raptor. That is uh, a very small silver lining on quite a dark cloud. 5-1-1 one one for Nemesis. He's absolutely gigantic. Most CS in the game. The Orianna is only going to get more and more scary. Has his Zonyas as well for a lot of extra safety. And uh, so much defensive vision. You can see LGD just playing on the back foot entirely as we crest the 20 minute mark. You've got 25 seconds on the Infernal Drake that we said was going to be a pivotal fight. And I have a feeling that it may not necessarily be as much as Fnatic do just have such a gigantic lead. Double Trinity Force is already completed here and self-made already had that warrior enchant. I mean, his horse is extraordinarily strong. Not to mention the bear as well. Well. Does seem like Fnatic now. They're just gonna play it super safe and steady. They're gonna have self-made pick up the infernal dragon. Yep, here's that dragon fight that we were talking about, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> horse versus dragon. Self-made showing us that horses win absolutely every time. Ignore all of those dragon-related movies that you've watched. This is how it works. As Peanut's going to come through, see where the man with the shotgun's going to be able to uh, also do it. As our self-made says, absolutely not. And uh, he's just going to be able to steal that one away. So cheeky. Out of the European jungler as Bwipo was there just in case things went wrong. Self-made, he is just laughing. having a very good, a very oh, good time. Well, Peanut might be a little bit tilted. I don't even know what he's yeah. looking for right <laughs> now. He was wandering <laughs> casually into a tri brush uh, with absolutely nothing to look for. However, his camps weren't available just yet. So now he's going to head towards his Raptors as they did just spawn. Mid laners have uh, relocated towards the top side of the map. As uh, Shea will just try and defend this inner turret, but this is not the position in the game as Zoe wants to be. You want to make the map dark and large for your opponent, not for yourself. That's not how it necessarily works. Also, got the worst uh, 
uh, rift for this game as yeah. well. If you are a Zoe, taking away terrain, not great when you have so many terrain-related abilities. And Zoe, I mean, she picks up the Banshee's Veil second, and that is going to be good against Enchanted Crystal Arrow and Solar Flare. Yep. As well as giving her some magic resistance against all of Fnatic's some magic damage, obviously. But it's going to mean that she's not going to hit as hard as she could. And sustained prolonged fights, I mean, it's not what LGD really wants right now. Last coin comes in. Zemmerclade not going to connect. Self-made. He's running real fast, but doesn't really have a destination just yet. Now he's just going to be able to take down this Rift Scuttler pretty comfortably. Longqing and Whippo are going to be fighting. Stormstrike comes down. As you can see, the Conqueror comes on in there as Longqing. He's decided he's not going to be able to win this one. He's going to flash away with Whippo. He has a flash button as well, and he's looking for the Crocodile. Gets it. One more auto should be enough as the Dawning Shadow is way too late from Kramer. And Whippo easily picks up the solo kill. And I mean, just right there, it, Rippo getting the solo kill on oh, no. Longqing really, I think, just cements. Peanut yeah, is yeah. turning up a little bit late yet again. She, I don't know what, okay. He's gonna lose half of his life right there. Yep. Death Cap gonna be the next item for the Orianna. The gold lead, just so massive. Also factor in that they have two of the best dragons in the game. Mountain and Infernal are there bolstering all the stats as well. Looks like Death Stance gonna be the next item for the Hecarim. And Fnatic look like they're content to just allow the game to keep going at this slow pace and just lean on dragons. They also just have a better late game composition when it comes to uh, team fighting, absolutely. More consistent DPS with the Ash, as well as the two Burly Boys in the uh, Ekarim and the Volley Bear, not to mention Orianna, who has been accelerated so much in this game. Nemesis just gigantic. 700 gold bounty at the moment. 9,000 gold is the lead for Fnatic. And they have been so decisive here today. After this game, if Fnatic are able to take the victory, then it'll say a 2-0 in the wins column for both them and Gen G. but they'll go into a rematch against the Korean yeah. squad looking so much more powerful. And Fnatic are, I mean, this is quite a showing that they've had here today. Yeah. They have looking very in shape. Mage Eyes also now completed onto Nemesis. And I think this just really builds up to that final game between those two later on today. Yeah, the choice of the Holy Book as well is going to be absolutely beautiful. Make us feel fantastic here sitting on this desk. As our back is going to come through LGD looking for one final reset before this Infernal Drake does come up. Fnatic will be getting to Soul Point there, but because the first Drake was taken so late, it is going to mean that uh, the Soul itself will definitely be a little bit belated. 31 minute Soul, theoretically, if they're going to grab it on spawn after this one. As Vision has been acquired by LGD on the Baron. As Nemesis turns up towards the top lane, does have his teleport available, so just going to add that extra pressure LGD, they poke their heads out, and they're looking for a potential fight around this Infernal Drake. Nemesis. I wonder whether he's going to stick around here as Longxing is looking for the wraparound. Peanut is on his way up here as well. There's the Dominus, immediately going to get popped. Nemesis is going to use the Shockwave beautifully timed there as the dice comes out, and Dissonance going to be there as well. Looks like Nemesis might be free and clear, but is going to have to avoid the Dawning Shadow. Does so, Slice Dice comes in, Bubble a little bit short. But that is going to be the Cold Meek coming out from Longxing, and Nemesis is in an alcove of death as the shutdown does come through. In the meantime, however, Whippo is taking an inhibitor <laughs> in the bottom lane. So I'd probably just be typing a worth in all chat there if I was Nemesis, as all of the backs are going to come down for Gen G. Kramer here just looking to try and uh, stop this Nexus turret from falling down as a result. Uh, yep. OK, well. This is uh, it's looking Nemesis a little bit dicey here. Too. Yep, four versus four is going uh, to come in as self made going to go down very, very low, but did a lot of AOE damage. That's going to be Whippo interrupted. 
as the ultimate does come out eventually. Longsheng culling absolutely nothing. Mark is going to fall down. The stuns come through and behind this huge bear in the front line. Fnatic are just going to tear LGD apart. It's a double kill for Reckless and make it the same for Bwipo. And uh, yeah, Fnatic are not they, so, slowing down anytime soon. Yeah, they're calling for the end of the game. And these new blast cones <laughs> going to help Fnatic get into the base. Nemesis. Is there with the TP? The big question, did he buy Sork Elixir? That's the that's the one on my mind, but I don't think it's gonna matter. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be taking points off for that one in this particular exam. The second Nexus turret is going to go down. Fnatic say no to tiebreakers, and their performance today has been second to none. Looking out for Genji at the end of this one. I, if I was Genji, I'd be sweating after seeing what Fnatic was capable of in their first two.